Hey, hey, hey. I'm Al Cavadlo, and we're working out. Thanks for listening to my podcast. My guest this week is Ryan Hurst. Ryan Hurst is the co-founder and head coach at GMB Fitness, a popular online resource for body weight training and calisthenics. If you enjoyed this interview, leave us a five-star review on iTunes, and make sure you check out my website, alcavadlo.com. All right, let's go ahead and get into the interview. You started getting into fitness at a pretty early age, right? Yeah, from around five years old, actually. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, man, pretty much. And actually before that, to be honest, because and even though I don't remember it, but my mom threw me in the pool. And so nice. my mom was always scared of water. And so she, like, I think we actually... I think it's like six months to be perfectly honest. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But yeah, so basically you literally much, got thrown I, right in. <laughs> yeah, they just threw me right in there and, and I survived. So I'm still here, which is cool. But yeah, I started at a young age, five years old and uh, started off with gymnastics and whatnot. But um, played baseball, you know, played uh-huh. soccer. Uh, didn't last too long with the baseball and the soccer. I tried basketball, <laughs> just didn't work out. So uh, stick stuck with gymnastics. So you've pretty so. much been exercising your whole life then, huh? Really, that's all I know. Um, it really is. And there was a time in my life where I thought I was going to step back from it. And I remember that time. And I actually worked for a Japanese company when I uh, graduated from college. And I just couldn't handle it, man. So And so I ended up getting right back into uh, exercising. So. So when when did you decide that you wanted to make fitness a career for yourself? Well, I wouldn't even say that I decided. It was more like it just kind of happened, to be honest. Um, I was working at a martial arts complex at the time. You were instructing? uh, Yeah, actually, I was the interpreter and the translator. Yeah. And so I worked for a shrine. So I was at a shrine here in Japan, and there was a martial arts complex there. And I had quite a few... Uh, non-Japanese uh, visiting because it was a pretty famous place and so they needed interpreters and translators and so I was working there and so I would attend the classes they would beat up on me and uh, I would interpret for the people who were there and um, that was one of the things that I did there and, and that led to you ultimately getting more involved in a fitness career absolutely and so you know previous to that I did um Quite a bit of yoga. I got really sick, to be honest. So I, I mentioned that Japanese company that I worked with for a year. I ended up getting sick. And so I got back into um, – needed to get back into fitness and whatnot. I actually got into yoga. What, what kind and of I, illness was it that you were dealing with, if you don't mind my asking? Um, yeah, I had the onset of testicular cancer. And oh, shit. So, yeah, I don't share that with too many people, to be perfectly honest. And so I had a, had a scare. And um, so I was like – got to take care of that. And so uh, I actually quit that company and uh, spent quite a bit of time. It's been about like six months, I believe. Um, I didn't do any uh, Western medicine. I did all Eastern medicine. I stayed here in Japan and I did acupuncture. I did herbal medicine. I did everything, you know, just basically I needed to do it. And then after six months, I went back in for a check um, at a Western doctor and he was like, wow, you're all cleared up. And I was like, cool. How about that? Yeah. Just just to clarify for people listening, you're an American, but you've been living in Japan for a long time now, right? Yeah, that's correct. So I came over to Japan, um, for college. Uh, if you're in the United States college, if you're elsewhere in the world for uni (laughs) and, uh, ended up staying. And so I'm 46 right now. So I've been in Japan about 25 26. So you've actually like, lived more of your life yeah. in Japan than in the U.S. at that this point. That is correct. Yes, that is correct. So I've lived over half of my life. The majority of my life I've been here in Japan. And so, yeah. So did you yeah. ever work in like a mainstream globo gym type of situation? Do they have many of those out there? Not, not – well, now they do. But when I was first getting into things, they didn't. And so, no, I've never worked in that environment before. And – Again, the environment I was in, I ended up, you know, I got yoga certified. I got my yoga certification, uh, 200 hour certification. I ended up getting fitness certification over here, or not over here, it was uh, 
through. Uh, it was the United States, and it, uh, it's a famous one. Can't remember. I had to do it all online though, and um, then I went over there and tested, and then I got involved with another fitness organization in the United States, and ended up uh, working my way up to becoming their um, head coach and chief programmer. Did, uh, did you ever teach yoga? I did. That was one of the major things that I did teach here in Japan. I actually, I remember I was still working at the martial arts complex, but in the evening, um, I was doing judo. So I was over here for martial art and judo. That was my primary, um, I don't even want to call it a sport, but basically what I did. But right before I went to judo, I would go teach yoga. And so I actually taught yoga uh, around in Osaka. So yeah. That's pretty cool. You know, I, I, I heard a quote once, and I, I can't remember. I wish I could remember who to attribute it to, that, that yoga is sort of like a martial art you do against yourself. So oh, a lot of people, oh, wow. That's kind of cool. yeah. right? That's a good way of looking at it. A lot of people like think that. That, that yoga and martial arts are, are these very different things. But there's there's an awful lot of overlap, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. And I think that way with movement, you know, like with GMB, you know, our background in GMB, Andy Jarlow and I is all martial art. And so, I mean, a lot of people look at some of the stuff we do and they're like movement, but we see it as martial art. And um, anyway, different topic. But so what, yeah, what, man, made, Japan, you, yeah, what yeah. made you decide to, to start a web based business? So, yeah, this was an interesting thing, too. We um, I had a gym, so I. My boss at the martial art complex, he was like, hey, man, things are going really well. He's like, I think you should quit and open up your own place. And I was like, seriously? I don't know anything about business, dude. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I opened up my own gym. And it was a pri- it was private uh, training. That's all I did. One-on-one. And like, Yeah, one-on-one, man. That's all I did. And um, still martial arts or just general fitness? No, this was general fitness. A lot of my clients were martial artists, martial artists, uh-huh. but I was branching out into the general public. And, um, you know, it did pretty well considering, um, you know, I, I ended up having my own TV show and I had two shows that I did was mobility at a mobility this is this and is in Japan. Was, you you had a TV show in Japan. And in Japan, is... and both of those shows became DVDs. And so, really? so Jarlo, this was yeah. So this was actually before GMB. And so this is kind of leading to where I'm going with this. But Do you Jarlo, remember what year that was? It must have been in the early days of the internet, too. I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And so if they made a DVD. It was a long time ago, right? <laughs> oh yeah, and it was DVD. It was all DVD, and um. You know, because there weren't any real fitness internet stuff going on. And so one of my students, guy you might have heard of, Andy Fawcett, who's now sure. our CEO of our company. He was a student of mine. How and, about that? Um, yeah, man. It's he, he was, was living, living in Japan at the time as well. That's correct. He was in Osaka. He was he was uh, working here. And uh, he knew me through this other fitness organization. He came in and I was teaching him. We just became friends. And. And uh, I was like, hey, man, so I got this thing that I'm working on right now. And it'd be kind of cool if like I put it online. Is that possible? And just the reason I asked Andy is because he had a lot of knowledge in that. And so this is right around the time <laughs> where Internet marketing was really just starting to come out. And it was bad. I mean, like, <laughs> it, you know, it was like like that one page that goes on forever, sure. you know, kind of marketing and, and whatnot. And, and Andy is really savvy when it comes to that stuff in terms of let's not do it that way sort of thing. You know what I mean? Right. I, I love so, the way you guys do your marketing, by the way, but we, we can get into that's, that in a that's little bit. Andy, man. I tell you what, that's Andy. And, and that's the thing. And so it was, it was really cool because, you know, the reason that we started doing it wasn't because – in the beginning, like, hey, let's do an online business. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, I mean, I guess you could say it was because we didn't want to do it the way that everyone else was doing it. Right. And the other thing, too, I live in Japan and Andy, of course, was here. But Jarlo, was in, he was in Hawaii at that time. So Jarlo was in Hawaii. So the, the and, three of you founded the company together, correct? That's correct. That's correct. So the three of us founded it. And... <laughs> And, you know, Jarlo was over in Hawaii. I was here. And so I would go over to the United States every once in a while. And Jarlo would go there, too, and we'd meet up. But the problem was is we weren't in the same place. Right. 
And we were like, you know what? Let's try this. Let's just see how this works out. And there was nothing out there. I mean, nothing online. It was all DVDs and books, mm -hmm. if there was, you know. And so. You guys had good timing. Was, we did. And that's what I was just going to say. It was a timing thing. And this was Andy. And Andy was like, all right, so, here's the vision. And I was like, cool, man. And so so I did the programming. Yeah. You didn't have a lot of experience with computers and websites at that time. It was it was pretty much Andy was handling all of that. Yeah, man. You know, um, prior to doing our first GMB program that we did again i had the uh that, that tv show that i did and it was a dvd and that's what we decided to put online and so the very first thing so even you know pre gmb the three of us worked together to take what jarlo and i had worked on which was that yoga dvd that television show i was doing uh -huh. and actually take that information update it and rewrite it so that we could put it online so that people could you know access those videos online. But even though we had that, we also had a DVD that we're selling. So even though we had things online, there was also the option to still buy the DVD. A few people still had DVD players back then. Yeah, right? man, it was. <laughs> and it was horrible because I remember like, we also had a manual that went with one of our products at the time. And so we printed all the stuff out and made these books. And there was like, I can't remember how many books, but they were all just all mistakes in there. And so we lost so much ah. money because of and that was when we decided, you know what? We're just gonna do PDFs right. and videos from here on out. And that's really where G and B took off. And that's where we were just like, you know what? We're not gonna do it like everybody else does it. So we just decided from that point on, you know what? We're gonna be us and that's it. Do you yeah. still train people in person or is your time pretty much just devoted to online clients and GMB and creating content for the web? So if I'm not overseas teaching a seminar, mm -hmm. then I'm not teaching in person. Um, 100%. Um, yeah, especially right now. I haven't taught a seminar this year that I can remember. Um, but yeah, it's I want to devote all of my time online to the people, um, especially my trainers, like we have the, the apprenticeship right now, right. which is a four, four month ordeal. It's not just a weekend certification. And so I hey, 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 my, there's nothing I wrong with a weekend certification, Ryan. Oh, no, that's totally <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. No, uh, I, I, I have a lot of appreciation for how in depth you guys go though with your, with your process. Yeah. And it is just a different process and that's it. There's nothing, you know, yeah. bad or anything about that. It's just, the reason that we have it so long, um, I'll, I'll just say this. I had some bad experience experiences um, when I was teaching weekend certifications. Yeah. And it's not that it can't be done. It's just that, again, we, we were looking for um, something different out of it. And so, yeah, but, you know, coming back to that. I love teaching. Teaching is what I absolutely love to do. I would love to do more seminars. I would love to teach more in person. The thing is this, you can relate to this. Yeah. Having a family, having kids. I was doing, you know, years I would do two weeks in Japan, two weeks overseas, two weeks in Japan, two weeks overseas. That was exhausting. Yeah. And I was still teaching That's in a, person. That's a, a, a particularly tough commute also. Oh, my goodness. Every time I leave Japan, it's a minimum, minimum. The closest I could do is 10 hours. So, you know, anyway, man. So right now, no, it's strictly online. And I have a lot of people. And thank you very much for those listening who want to come to Japan and train with me. I really appreciate that. But, um, you know, I don't have a gym like most people think. Uh, right. GMB, we're not in the same place. Uh, we're located all over the world. We have 25 employees. Or actually, that's probably a lie. I think we only have like 23 it changes from time to time, but, um, we're all located throughout the world and there are the only, the, I think maybe the people who see each other the most are probably Andy and I, cause Andy is in Tokyo now. Okay. And so, yeah. And so like last week I went up to Tokyo and hung out with him. But other than that, yeah. So just all online, man. You know, we were talking about marketing a minute ago. And one of the things that I really love about GMB is, you're a very honest company, and I, I always say that you never need to lie to sell training, but yeah. there's so much hot air in the fitness industry. So you guys, you intentionally went out to, to be the antithesis of that? 
Yeah, and I don't even – I mean, well, thank you first off for saying that. I really appreciate it. And that's something also I love about you as well. Um, but I, I, I've I can gone out of my way to, to try to, to not do that myself for sure, and that's, that's yeah. part of why I admire you guys. I think – and I can bring it back to you if, if I may. And I think it's a matter of you are being yourself. Yes. And it shows. And it shows. And I just got to be honest. I mean – what you see with GMB is what you get. I mean, the way that Andy, you know, has some, you know, there's a reverence there, of course. You Absolutely. know, that's very you guys, important. You guys have too. a good sense of humor. You know, and we got to have that too. So, I mean, we're not trying to be anyone. Um, we're just trying to be ourselves. And, I mean, I got to be, I'm always trying to be better. And the thing is, is, you know, this, as you become a father and, you know, I'm 46 now and you get older and <sighs> there's just so much bs out there and it's just like it's, it's exhaust you know so do, do you pay a lot of attention to what other companies on the web and in the fitness world are doing so i used to um you know i'm always studying um i always want to learn from people but my thing um especially right now is uh, trying to ignore as much as possible. And that might surprise people. It's not that I'm not trying to get better. It's just, I know what I want right now. I know how I can be better for the people that I want to be better for. And I ignore everything else. When somebody gets online and starts saying, this person said this, and, and this person is better than this, I walk away. It reminds me of the martial arts because everybody's yeah. saying my instructor is better than yours and can kick his butt. And I'm just like, Hey man, that's cool. You guys go ahead and you do that. I'm going to be over here practicing and, and doing the stuff I want to do. So how much do you yeah. care about things like likes and followers and all that? Oh, zero, man, like zero. Um, so this is interesting that you bring this up. Um, I had a really, I mean, I was posting almost every single day on Instagram uh -huh. and it was exhausting. I just got to yeah, be honest. It's work. And I stopped doing that. And the cool thing is, is yeah, I might lose some followers, but I would rather only have people who are interested in following me and, you know, the hanging quality out with me. more than the quantity. Yeah, man. And that's exactly how GMB is too. I mean, we could sell our soul and we could be millionaires. I mean, people might think that we're raking in the box. But you're you're not like, a millionaire already, Ryan. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, come on now. Come on now. It's, isn't it funny, it's, though, that people can sometimes yeah. assume these things? Like, oh, you're you're yeah. the lead trainer for GMB. You must be breaking it in. Absolutely. Um, I only fly private jet everywhere <laughs> I go. And uh, no, the thing is, that's another interesting topic because, you know, Andy and Jarlo and I realized that it, it wasn't about us. Yes, we started this company. The reason we started the company was for one reason in the beginning. We wanted to take care of our families. Sure. That was and then it expands where, okay, we can do that now. So we really want to, you know, we want to look at our staff and we want to take care of our staff and, you know, take care especially of the people who believe in GMB and want to be a part of GMB. We'll take care of everybody. And so the thing is, you know, the money, we're always investing it back into the company. It's right now, I mean, that's our most important thing is how can we make GMB better for the people that want to be involved. And so the money, yeah, I mean, if I had a million dollars, I honestly have no idea what I would do with it. Like if <laughs> I had a stack of money right now, I I wear the same clothes, you know, I'm still the same dude, you know. I I, I honestly don't know. And <laughs> and I'd like to think that I wouldn't change even if I was a 10 million, 100 million dollars in the bank, you know. You said you're constantly looking to refine what you guys are doing. Yes. And I noticed that you recently have been um, revamping all of the programs and you're going to stop selling the old stuff. Can you tell me more about that? Absolutely. Um, you know, like all of us, hopefully, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we get better with age and we look to evolve you know, if you if you always do the same thing, you're going to stagnate. Um, it's not that the old stuff is bad, but with GMB, it's similar to martial art. It's similar to the way that we've learned over the years. At that time in our life, that was where we were at, and that was really good. But now and you have a beard, I, and in all those old videos, you're clean shaven. 
<laughs> and I have to redo everything. And so rather than just, you know, reshooting everything, we said, we're just going to kill it. Yeah, I'm just kidding. But, but yeah, man, that's kind of how it is. It's like as you move along, you know, and, and grow, you realize, okay, there's better ways that we can present this to help more people in a way that's more efficient. Cool. And so that's what it is. You know, I've worked on the curriculum. I've, you know, rewriting the curriculum in the sense that, I want the method to shine through. It's not about a program. The it's overlying about... principles more than the specifics. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know that we can do this, and we are, hit, hit, doing this in a much better way right now. So, so is, take... is a lot of that based on feedback that you got from people? You know, you, you have the old version of the program, years. and thousands yeah, of people have it's gone through it. Thousands and, and right? thousands and thousands of people. And I'm very lucky because – my staff too, they know, you know, they take this feedback that we get from people and they share it. And, and, you know, we're, we're really into the data and looking at, okay, what's working, what's not working right. and why. And right. that's really important. And, and trying to get rid of my, you know, the ego and say, no, this is, this is perfect, man. Why would we want to change this? You know, well, if it's not, if, if we can make it better, if we can do it uh -huh. in a way where I kind of think of it like music, if you look at music, like your first album is your baby, you sure. know, and it's like, yeah. But the thing is, is over time you evolve, you become a better musician. You you learn little hopefully. things where it's going to, you know, and you're right, right? And then it, hopefully, right? And then the other thing is you get feedback from other people and you're right. inspired by certain things. And so that's where we are right now, to be honest. And, and you know, putting these other putting these programs, the rings program, the parallels programs and the floor program in the vault, as we say, which I think mm -hmm. is absolutely hilarious. Yeah, they're going away. But that doesn't mean that the movements, the skills that we're doing are going away. Right. We simply want to now present this in a way that we feel is better and looking at the method so that it's not just about rings. It's not just about P bars. It's about the method being applied to whatever you want to do for whatever you need to do. Yeah, I always say when I teach certifications that, you know, the old saying, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat one meal. Yes. But if you teach him to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. And I want to go fishing with my students. I don't want I to just me. give them the fish. And, Absolutely. Uh, once, right you, there with you. once you understand those things, you, you can apply them to any context and you'll understand. Yeah. It's not just, oh, I memorized this list of progressions, but you, you understand <laughs> how to create your own progressions based on what's happening in the moment. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what we're after. It's, it's that awareness of what's going on. It's not about following a prescribed thing. Thing. It's, okay. But Ryan, can't you just tell me exactly what to do? I don't want to have to oh, think yeah. for myself. <laughs> <laughs> don't you love that? I love it. And I yeah. get that. I totally get it. You know, it's like, you know, in the beginning, yeah, I get that. But that's what we're after. We, we want people to come in here and we want to be like, all right, this is not only what I want, but this is what I need. And we say, okay, here's how we can help you with this. And then that person becomes more aware and then learns how they can do it. And then they start seeing the changes. And then they move on. And, and this might sound funny, but I mean, like, it reminds me of my wife. She's an acupuncturist. Uh -huh. And her goal is never to see her patients again. Yes. And, you know, I'm kind of like that, too. It's not that I don't want to see anybody anymore. It's just kind of like, Ryan, thanks. You really got me to this point. I'm really inspired. And I'm going to move on. I'm like, yes. Yes. You want to set them I've free. And then, and then you can yes. bring someone else in. Absolutely. Yeah. I can retire just right around my jet all over the world because I'm a billionaire. No, I meant, I meant bring in other, other students because you can only teach so many students at once, right? No, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. That, that sounds nice too, retiring in a jet. So <laughs> you, you are in your 40s and the other GMB guys are all around the same age. Do you find that most yeah, of yeah. – what, say that yeah. again? Yeah, they're younger. They're, they're all younger than me, but yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I'm the old man, so yeah. But But – you, I mean, none of you are, are like in your teens or 20s and, and a lot of the fitness <laughs> audience, a lot of the people yes. using social media to find fitness information are a lot younger than, than you and I. Yes. Do you That's find true. that your audience is mostly older guys? And when I say older, I mean, you know, 30s, 40s, mm -hmm. 50s, yeah. or do you get a lot of younger followers as well? You know, uh, we do have some younger followers, um, but yes, it is mostly, I would say, you know, 30s. 40-ish crowd. Um, you know, 
if we do get a lot of the younger people, typically it's they have a fitness background. Right. Um, you with, know, with that, which I really appreciate. But yeah, with the older crew, is it, is it a lot of people who are just discovering fitness later in life? They're finding they're starting to get aches and pains and falling apart and saying, wait a second, I need to do something. <laughs> Those are typically the people that I wouldn't say typically, but that's a large majority of the people that do come to GMB. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, comes back to being able to, you know, we have that empathy for them because that's where we are. Right. Exactly. You know, we get like, we get attracts it, man. like, yeah, man. And, and we want to be those people, you know, there might be places out there and they're kind of like, Oh yeah, man, I only teach like high level skills or I can, you know, I'm like, cool. That's great, man. You know, we want to be the bridge to get people from used to work. I don't even say workout. We don't say workout. We say like, you know, practice and stuff yeah, like that. And sure. It's not that working out is bad because that's a part of what we it's do. It's just how but you frame like these train. things, right? Yeah. I'm just like, nah, it's all good, man. Like enjoy it. And so trying to just get a person to re to like reevaluate how they look at things, reframe how they look at it. Just start to like get back into it. Don't think you have to be the best at it or anything like that. You know, just get to the point where you're comfortable in your body so that you can do the other stuff in your life that you want to do. And so this is the thing, you know, I show a lot of tricks and, and skills and whatnot, and people kind of misunderstand thinking that that's the goal. And to me, it's not, you know, that's what has happened because of me doing this and continuing on this path. So but the I, thing is, is a lot of people don't see the other stuff I do. When, when guys your age find out, though, that you've been doing this since you were a kid, do you uh-huh. feel like if they're new to it, they use that as an excuse? Like, oh, well, Ryan's been doing this forever, Absolutely, so I'll never man. get where he's at now. And how do, you, how do you deal with that sort of thing? Oh, it's pretty simple. I haven't I haven't shown anything in our new programs. And, you know, that's what it is. It sounds super silly. But the thing is, is I, we use other people. So a great example is— So you're is, not the one demonstrating the stuff now. You have your clients demonstrating it. Not anymore, it. man. Not anymore. I like and that. And we're very careful of, you know, for example— Last, um, I don't even know when. Well, I think it was November. Uh, it gets blurry, right? <laughs> yeah, man, it all runs together. I was in Atlanta and uh, spent a week shooting mm-hmm. um, a lot of stuff, man. It was fabulous because literally, I think there was one thing that I did, and I just needed to show my hands uh-huh. for a one arm handstand. I didn't even do the one arm handstand, I just needed to show my hands. Cheater. My <laughs> don't tell me it was all wires wires <laughs> but yeah man it was the first time where for all this stuff all i did was this yabby 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 yeah and it was fabulous and the reason why is because i had you know i had rose and i had chris who are two of my trainers to show it and they move so differently than i do you know yeah. it's purposely important for people to see that, that that different it's bodies great. are going to move yeah. a little bit differently yeah, man. We also brought in two people who had never done any GMB at all, like zero. And and that went and well. Was that could, was that could be a disaster, couldn't it? Yeah, it could, right? It could. It was so it was it was wonderful because they had we had no expectations of them and we were just like, Hey, right. let's just try this. And it worked out so well because these are the people that are coming to us. And we want people to understand, okay, we we understand what you're going through. And yeah. this is how you can make these adjustments. And this is where we all have to suck before we get good. Yes. And so therefore, that's a big theme in you, your teaching. Embrace the suck. It is, man. I always say it. And people misunderstand what I mean. Like, yeah. embrace the suck. Yeah. Work harder. No, 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 no. Understand you're not going to be good. You're going to suck at it. Therefore, embrace that. Have yeah. fun. Make it playful. Yeah. It's just movement. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to do with this podcast. You know, I'm, I'm yeah, learning man. a lot as I go. And uh, I'm embracing being a, a beginner at it, and that's that's part of what made me wanting to do it. Is just it's it's something that. different. It's it's something that, that people have said, said to me for a long time. Oh, you should do this, but yes. I had to myself decide I wanted to do this. And recently, yeah. it's just been just been coming back up in my mind over and over. And all the reasons I kept thinking of not to do it are the same silly excuses I hear from people why they don't work out. So I said to myself, you know what, <laughs> I want to do this. I'm just going to do it. It doesn't matter if no one listens. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect the yes. first time. I just uh, I just have this yearning in me, and I, I need to, to do this thing. 
And you know what? You what you just said is beautiful because oh, shocks. Thanks. No, man. <laughs> I mean, it goes for anything in life. It doesn't matter what other people think. It really yeah. just in it's the so beginning, hard just, though, right? To, to let go of that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and this is something that, especially with my kids now, that we're really looking at is like, mm-hmm. you know, the pressure of other people saying things like that. Whether you know they're they they say half. They're half, my my wife is Japanese, so uh-huh. you know they call in Japan they call half non-Japanese, right. half Japanese, half. But my, our big thing is no, you're not half. You're you're a full kid. Yeah. It's all good. It doesn't matter what people think, you know. So just be you, do you, and just enjoy the crap out of it. So hell yeah. yeah. Do you, do you ever worry that all of your success is going to end and you're just going to have to go back to being an interpreter at a dojo or something like that? <laughs> you know what? Um, I think the fact that I think not so much about it, but the fact that I understand that it could all end tomorrow yeah. keeps me moving forward. Um, wow. And I wouldn't say hustling, but... Here's something that might surprise people. If it were to end tomorrow, um, not that I would be happy, but I'm proud of what we've done. I'm proud of the fact that Andy and Jarlo and I are still together. Um, a lot of people who work together don't stay together. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, I'm really it's, proud of It's of one of those things they say, don't, don't mix business and pleasure, right? And you guys were best Absolutely. friends or good friends and you decide to start yeah. a business together. That's absolutely. I mean, we have our fights and, you know, everything like that. But I think it's the fact that, you know, we're, we're able to look beyond that. And, and I think this is the difference is that it was never about me. It was never about one of us. It was about GMB and like what we wanted to do for people out there. We're, we're teachers. We're not fitness gurus. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, if it, if it ended tomorrow and I had to go back to doing something, I mean, I would just be teaching, you know. So right it on. would just be different. <laughs> well, that that's it a great attitude to have. So, just yeah, just being grateful and has, fortunate and yeah, appreciating exactly. that's that. Yeah, that's grateful. I've been thinking a lot about this sort of thing recently. I think you know, about it too, man. <laughs> midlife crisis, right? That's what it is. So you know, I'm going to go buy a, a convertible here in a little bit. You know, I, so. I'm going to be 40 <laughs> this year, and and I I love talking to guys who are doing this who are a little older than me because the older I get, I start thinking to myself, is this going to still be viable for me in 10 years or 20 years, or am I going to have to do something else? And I guess that's part of the reason why I'm I'm trying to do this podcast thing because there's no I love it. There's no physical component to this. Yeah, but well, it, it definitely it. it gets yeah. draining, and and I I can feel when yeah. I was 32, 33 versus now. It's my body feels different. And that's not to say like, oh, I'm getting old and I, I can't do it anymore. No, I you, you. you have to yeah. respect uh, that, that things change. And, and I have those worries sometimes like what what's going to happen? But same as you, yeah. I just try to stay in the moment with it and just let the yeah. path unfold and things have a way that's of you playing out the way they're supposed to. They do. But but just what you mentioned, you know, this is why I've stepped back from teaching so many seminars, you know, yeah. it's, it's 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 grueling, isn't it? It's exhausting being yeah. on an airplane for that many, you know, hours and the jet lag and yes. and just I love teaching. I love meeting people in person, but I I need to be healthy. I need to be myself so that I can be better for everyone else. And yeah. you brought up something very interesting is that if you truly want to teach in person your entire life, figure out how you can do that. And a lot oh, yeah. of people when you're young, you don't think about this. You're like, "No, nah, man, I'm good." But the thing is is so taxing on the body how can you take care of yourself to be able to do that or like you're talking about you evolve yes and that's what we've always tried and the business evolves you know the the whole online thing like we were saying when when you and i started doing it it was a pretty new market and now it's very saturated that's crazy uh, but it's it's also it's one of those things i think about how much the industry has changed already in the last 10 15 years and i wonder in another 10, 15 years, like what the heck oh, is it yeah. going to be like then? Absolutely, dude. You know, when, what is it? I would say recently in, in the mainstream market, but I mean, we know that it's been here a little bit. It cracks me up when now we have people who are official movers. Sure. They're movers. And people to love me, to, movers, to 
give these different labels. You know, no, I'm a coach. I'm not a trainer. You know, it's like, whatever. Yeah, I, don't, I don't get hung up on the semantics. Uh, me either. I'm just like, whatever, dude. Funny thing is, anytime somebody says I'm a mover, I'm just like, ah, oh, you move furniture? You know, they don't <laughs> like when I say that. But um, so what, what yeah, do you, man, and that's just, yeah. What do you say when, when people ask you what you do for a living? Yeah, so this is funny. Um, my The apprenticeship right now, so we just had uh, – Every once in a while, we have a uh, a call, and I get everybody on there, and we talk. And I got this question. They're like, "So how do I explain what GMB is?" That's the number one question I get from these people. Like, how are we supposed to explain what GMB is? Right. Well, I don't know. I'm just kidding. But the other thing is, how do you explain what you do? Well, this is something my mom and my dad and and you know everybody have had trouble with for the past ten years explaining yeah. what I do. So this is what I say. Um, I don't care about titles. I really, in terms of like, well, I don't care. I just tell people I'm sitting on a plane and, you know, of course it happens all the time. They're like, hey, so what What do you do? And I'm going to say, I'm a teacher. And they go, oh, what do you teach? Right. And I say, I teach physical education. But they think and that you're like at a junior high school or something when you say exactly. it like that, right? Exactly. And typically the conversation ends right there. And and because I'm always just like you want so it to kinda, end. You don't you don't want to have yeah, to explain I don't it all. Talk right? about it, man. You know. But the thing is, is this is another thing about me. I'm trying to take the conversation to the other person instead of me going blah 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 blah. But but it is tough because you know then you get people who are like, oh, real physical education. So where do you teach? And I was like, oh, actually, it's all online. And they're like, wait a minute. Then it kind of opens up, and then you right. start talking about physical autonomy, and they're just like, "Okay, that sounds interesting. What is that?" Like, but what mean? can I do to lose my love handles, Ryan? That's it, and that's <laughs> where we get into. And I'm like, "Well, I'm actually not that kind of teacher." And they're like, "So wait, you're in fitness, though, aren't you?" And I'm just like, "Okay, there's different kinds of fitness here." Yeah. So, yeah, it is tough. But I just first start off. I'm a teacher, and this is the thing too with me. It's like people joke, and they're like, "You're an international fitness celebrity." And I'm just like, isn't that, that nice is though that some people think that about about you? I think it is. That <laughs> really is. But I'm still just that kid from Kansas who you know happens to live in Japan and speak Japanese. You know that that's how I'm just like I always see myself that way. You know, and it's just like, yeah. I mean, I'm a coach. I'm a teacher. I mean, whatever. But the thing is, is I'm just again, as I get older, just trying to be more about me and take everything to the other person to say, how can I help you? So. I'm a helper. I guess I could say I'm a helper. <laughs> I think that's a that great answer. No yeah, I'm, I'm the same as you. Usually I just try to keep that conversation brief and just say I'm a trainer yes. or just try to change the topic yeah. altogether because yeah. I just don't want to have to get into explaining it all. But sometimes right. it just uh, you just got to try to break it all down. But that's part yeah, of man. why I, I love talking to, to you is because you're one of the few people in the world that I know that does what I do. And yes, it's nice right? to be able to, to commiserate with someone else who's in the same shoes because it's kind of an unusual years, career yeah. path. Absolutely. Over the years, you and I, I mean, even like Mike Fitch, you know, the three of yeah. us is like I, I we're interviewed together, him just a, like, a couple episodes ago, in fact. Good, good. Yeah. We, we um, got into talking about some of this stuff, too. These these are just reoccurring themes, right? <laughs> that's hilarious. I will say a funny answer, though, is uh, Andy, when he's on the plane, he tells people that he works for a publishing company. Okay. Which is not a lie. Internet lie. publishing. People people still think of yeah. paper books. Right. And so but he just says he works for he doesn't say he's a CEO. He doesn't say right. anything. He says I work for a publishing company. Well you and know what's was, funny is is I yeah. meet a lot of people who they say, Oh, I am a CEO and it's like right. your whole business is just you. You're an independent trainer, but you're trying to sound like a bigger deal. So a lot of times <laughs> yeah, but- yeah. People who really are a big deal want to downplay it, and people who yeah. aren't want to do the opposite. You know, I see these trainers sometimes, and they've got like 500 letters after their name, every cert they've ever gotten. And I'm like, why do you feel the need to have to put all of that? Yeah, that's and, cool, uh, man. Yeah, yeah it's just sometimes the, the, the attempt to look really accomplished and professional actually does the opposite. When I see someone yeah. and they've listed yeah. 10,000 letters after their name, I'm like, this person's an amateur. <laughs> yeah, or it's not a person you really want to talk to, right? The, or, uh, or they're just way I mean, too much yeah. into the 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 theoretical side of this stuff. Oh, I hear you there. Wow. Yeah. Now there are people with letters behind their names, and um, like Jarl is a great example. You, mm-hmm. you know, doctor of physical therapy. I mean, 
it's good to have those letters behind your name, but like, sure. you know, you're you not going to see feel Jarlo. the need to say yeah. it every single time you introduce yourself. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Now, so. I, I have a, a CSCS certification, which in the uh -huh. U.S. is considered like one of the top fitness yeah, credentials you could have. And I've yeah. been CSCS certified for a very long time. Uh -huh. And when I published my first book, it said on it by Al Cavadlo, CSCS, because I wanted uh -huh. everyone to yeah. know I had that. Hell and then yeah. after the first one, I said, you know what? I don't need to put that there because my name, I want that to stand alone. I want that to be what people right. know me for, not because exactly. of my affiliation with a certain organization. And I'm yep. still certified through them because, you know, for business purposes, you need to, to have a certification for insurance and yeah. et cetera. But yeah. this is the, the one of the first and only times that I even mention it because it's, it's not really relevant, I think. No, I'm right there with you. I mean, you know. There, well, there was a time like, for example, well, when I came over from the other fitness organization, there's a lot of people who knew me through that organization. So it was pretty, you know, we were lucky to have that. But, you know, when we first started off, put out our first program, there was that fact we felt we did have to prove ourselves. Yeah. you know. And so there Everyone is a lot goes of that, that in I, the beginning. Absolutely. And so I get why some people would do that. But, you know, my, again, my advice to those of you youngins out there listening mm -hmm. just be yourself man yeah. just just do the work and be humble and just you know just try and help people and and and, and it'll happen man and just keep learning and then those letters won't even matter so, exactly yeah. exactly well thanks for for taking the time to chat with me today ryan it's been Brother, enjoyable and it. enlightening thank you so much always and uh, get you on our podcast soon. It's a deal. Before we uh, sign off, just let everybody know where they can find you online and all that. Not that you care about likes and followers or anything like that. But they <laughs> they might want to for their own personal Absolutely. enrichment. Absolutely. So on any of the socials, uh, just type in GMB Fitness. And our website is GMB.com. I O. That's it. Excellent. Well, I owe you a big thank you for being my guest today, Ryan. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> thank and you so we'll, much, uh, man. We'll talk soon, buddy. All right. Cheers, brother. Well, that's all for this episode. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave us a five star review on iTunes or wherever else you may be listening from. And make sure you check out my website, alcavadlo.com, for information on my upcoming workshops, my books, my app, and more. Make sure you tune in next week to the podcast, when my guest will be Simon Atta, a.k.a. Psy Monster. <laughs>